Now let's press play again, and let's see how this works out. As you can see, it's pulling. It's actually not tearing itself, which is quite impressive. You can see a small tear. I'll pause the animation up there. You can see a small tear up here, but it really didn't pull apart. So, what we will have to do is either increase the wind strength, or we will have to make a new tear group. So first I will try out by increasing the wind strength. We will click on our wind, go to frame, right click on frame 85, wind strength, and set that up to, let's say, 12. And then we'll go to frame 150, set that up, and hit 12 value as well, just to make sure it's the same value throughout. Now we'll reset the simulation play again. And if this doesn't work, we'll have to recreate our tear groups. And it kind of rips, and there it goes, perfectly. And it just kind of flaps and falls in the wind. As I said, it looks very nice. So, let's start, and after this, we will make it so there is it does not start at this location right here. We want to kind of start in the middle of it, like, so it just looks like it's starting in the middle of a breeze. So what we'll do for this is we'll reset the simulation and I will play it from the start. And wherever you see a place that you want just looks good that to start from, press the pause simulation by just clicking this play button again and go capture initial state. So, reset my simulation. As you see it's captured this initial state and now it starts out there. Press play again and it starts from this animation, flaps around a bit, and then it will quickly tear off. And there it goes. As you can see, there's a little strand holding it on, just holding on for its dear life. And it, oh, it's even wrapped around, I like that, how it wrapped around the wind pole. If you didn't set this pole to a static mesh, it won't wrap around like that. It'll just kind of cut right through it. So make sure you set that as a static mesh. As well, a problem I have gotten is I have had it be very stretchy, even if I set the preset to zero, even if I set the preset to cotton or the stretchiness to zero, it still stretches crazily. To fix this, I just reloaded it and started from scratch, and it worked. So I will save my animation. Go under wherever you want to save it. Under desktop for me, tutorials, flag tear. These are my other trials for it, and I will just save it as a new flag tear. All right. So. Now, let us start with setting up our lights, materials, and then we will just bake this in and it will be done. So, let's set up our lighting first. We will go under Systems, Daylight. Yes, we want to create a daylight system and set the MR Photographic Exposure Control. Just drag out your compass. This now pops up right away because it automatically creates MR Sky. As a default, just click yes, and we have MR Sun, MR Sky, and we will probably have to lower her horizon, but let's not do that until we render it out quickly to test. Now let's render this out. My computer is a bit slower than my normal one, and yeah, that looks good enough. Now let's set up the, let's lower her sky, and set up our materials. Actually, first I want to make sure the sky is in there. So do another quick render. Yeah, there is our sky. Actually, I kind of like that camera angle. So, as you might have seen from my previous tutorial, setting up your sky, your horizon is right here under your daylight systems, daylight MR advanced sky advanced parameters, and just put your sky to about negative, about negative 2.5, especially from this camera angle. If you were doing another camera angle, like up here, your sky might need to be lower so you don't see that brown plane. If you want to see that brown plane, go ahead and all my power to you. But if you don't, I wouldn't do that. Now, I'm going to set up a few quick settings in here, so to make some haze in the sky. So set my haze to 0.25. And other than that, I'm going to just drop it in more of a blue tint. And to go for blue tint, you actually have to go in the negative values. So about negative 0.5 gives a nice little blue tint. I don't really mind where my sun is set up right now, just kind of straight high noon setup. So I will put my camera in a position I kind of like it, which is about here. 
and I will select this and put some materials on it. So first, I'll start with just a basic previs material or gray material. Go architecture and design. So do this in your slate material editor. Go under right click, go under materials, mental ray, and architecture and design. If you don't have this slate material editor, go under modes and click slate material editor. This is a much faster way of using the material systems and it's much easier to know your hierarchy. I probably will do a tutorial on just using this material editor because it is so powerful and so fast to use. So let's quickly double click on this to bring up your settings. Let's set reflectivity down to zero. I'll select everything in my scene and I will open up my slate material editor again, drag and drop it using that node and I'll assign it to the selection. Now I want this to be kind of a metal pole. Sorry about my slowness of my computer. It is really lagging right now. Oh my gosh. And I will set a mental ray material, architecture and design. Double click on it to bring up the material and parameters. And I'll just use a straight brushed, actually straight satin metal. So click select template, click satin metal, and drag and drop that straight onto flagpole. Now for my flag I want kind of something different, so it kind of looks like a flag. I've already found a good material under the mental, uh, under the Autodesk libraries that it comes with, and I will show you which one I used. So click Architecture and Design again, double click to bring up all your parameters, click on here, and we want it a matte finish. Now under our color, I click this, bring up a bitmap. This will open up a dialog box, and I will map to my wherever my 3ds Max textures are shown. Usually it's under your C or D drive, depending on where you installed it, Program Files, Common Files, Autodesk Shared, Materials, Textures, 3, Mats. That's where you'll find the map I use. And it's also under your 80 times 86 so it's under your 32-bit program files, not your 64 if you're using a 64-bit machine. So we'll go down here into the finishes. I'm pretty sure it's under the finishes. It's under finishes and fabrics. So there you go, finishes, fabrics. And I like this one right here. Finishes, fabric. Furnishings Fabric Stripes 3. Double click that for my diffuse color map. And now under my bump map, I'll just click on this node, drag out, go standard. It's just another way of opening up and creating a bitmap. If you wanted to, you could also go under the editor here. And I'll show you that later. Right after I get this. So under furnishings, fabric, this is the bump map. So Stripes 3 bump, that's the one I want. It's the one they gave with you, and that's the one I want. Double click on that, and there it is. And also, as you said before, you can just go under here, under your special purpose maps, make sure your bumps check, right click or click on this, go under bitmap, and then find the same thing. Now, next is setting up the bitmap. As you can see, even if I show material in the viewport, right there, and assign it to this. You can see it's very a lot of little things. They did kind of a new thing in the new slate editor, which gives you a size instead of a tiling mount. And I don't know if I like it yet, but it works well. So you just because our flag is 40 by 20, our width will be 40 inches on this, and our height will be 20 inches on this map. And it is rotated wrong, so we'll go under a W rotation and rotate that to 90. As you can see now, it's got a nice little one, two, three stripe, and it looks kind of like a flag. Make sure you also do the same with your bump map so the bump does not look wrong compared to the flag itself. Double click on that, set the width to 40, set the height to 20, and go under your W angle and set that to a 90 degree turn. Now, that should be everything for materials. So let's do a quick render to make sure it looks good. Again, sorry for my slow computer. And I might need to lower the horizon a bit, but that's easy enough to do. So, let's go under Modify. Actually, first I have to select my Daylight System. This is just bringing down my horizon a bit. So you go select my name, click double-click on Daylight, and bring my head and my horizon down to about 0.5. That should be good enough. Now, I'm going to bake my animation in. So I will select this, make sure it's working the way I want it, so I'll just play through one more time. And that's, yeah, that's about what I want. Just kind of flapping in the wind. When it hits to frame 80 down here, it will rip really nicely. 
whatever it gets there. Do, 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 do. And there's this gust of wind, there's the rip, and there it's kind of just falling around. Kind of whips up, and then whips around the flagpole, which I kind of like. Alright, so that's what I want baked in. So I will go under Mass Effect Options, Mass Effect Tools, right here. Go under Simulation Tools, and hit Bake All. Again, I've had some problems with this giving me when I hit Bake All. It gives me a script error, and I have absolutely no idea how that comes up. However, I do know you just reset your tear groups, and reset your node groups, and make them again. It will help out with the error, and it will work again. So I'll just let this bake through. My computer's a bit slower. As I've said before, I'm not on my production computer like I usually am. And the speed is not the best. However, I still wanted to get these tutorials out for you because, especially with the new fabric tools and dynamics that Mass Effects and NVIDIA is offering us, I really want to show you guys how to do some really cool effects in this. So we'll wrap around nicely like that. And we'll wait for this to finish up. Frame 250. Yeah, I usually hum to myself when I'm rendering code stuff or doing physics stuff. Alright, we'll let it finish baking. I'll let it catch up. As you can see, my mouse is going kind of having a seizure. And we'll play back the animation. Scrub through it, kind of flaps through, kind of runs down. Now let's click away, press play, and see how this works. Flapping in the wind, big gust of wind, big gust of wind wrapping around, and there it goes. That looks good. Now I'm going to set up a few things with my rendering engine, and that will be it. So, let's go under F10. To set up some F10 brings up a render setup dialog. If you do the hockey doesn't work, just use the render setup dialog here. Once it ever decides to pop up, there it is. And my output size, I will make 1280 by 720. Under my, I will force two side to make sure that both sides of the plane get rendered properly. That is actually very important since the plane is only one side, you force two side and both sides get properly rendered. Under rendering, I will set my minimum samples to 116. That's usually good for a medium and computer like the one I'm using right now. 4 and 64 is the ones I usually like using, however, I don't have a strong enough computer. I'll use a Mitchell type filter, which is the best, and soft shadow precision about 2. Now, we will go under indirect illumination. We don't have much fan on gather, so that works perfectly fine. I'll probably go that over in another tutorial. Processing and render elements, we don't need to do anything with, so let's quickly set up just one right now. So I'm going to just render a single frame, see how it looks. I like the look of that. I really do. It looks kind of like a flag flapping in the wind like it should. Close that out. Close out the render setup. Actually, in will close that out. We will click Active Time Segments. And now we will save our files. Go under Files, under wherever you want to save your files. For me, it's Desktop Tutorials, Flag Care. I'll make a Renders folder for this. Always nice to keep it in a Renders folder. And hit Frame, because that's what I usually call them as. Save it as ping file and press OK. Press Render, and there it is. Your flag will now be able to tear. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any comments or concerns or anything you need help with, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm just starting this, well, this tutorial thing, and I would like to know how I can do better. Um, I hope you enjoy and learn something new, and I'm really actually looking forward to what I can do with the cloth tears and the new dynamic rag dolls, which I'm really hoping to look forward to and hopefully have a tutorial for in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and have a good one. I hope to see you soon. Cheers.